If you have been in a car before, you most likely have been in a traffic jam. They add countless hours to your commute, and the constant stop and go makes it feel like you're moving at a snail's pace. Just when it feels like you're going to be stuck here forever, a thought pops into your head: traffic, like many other things in life, should follow the law of supply and demand. So the solution to traffic should be simple: just build more roads, and all the traffic will disappear. Traffic jams happen when there's too much demand for the road, and when we need to raise the supply by building bigger and wider roads to reach an equilibrium. While it may seem that building wider highways is a simple and straightforward solution to traffic, doing so often won't help with congestion. Just take a look at cities like Dallas and Los Angeles, cities known for their extremely wide highways and horrendous congestions. Traffic jams do not seem to go away with these roads. In fact. These cities often have more frequent traffic jams than those without an extensive road network. This raises a question: Is traffic an exception to the concept of supply and demand? And if not wider roads, how can we reduce traffic in our cities? Like many other goods, traffic also follows the laws of supply and demand, but only to an extent. Every roadway provides a certain amount of capacity, which contributes to the quote-unquote supply side of traffic, while cars and daily traffic volume forms the demand side of traffic. If there's less supply than demand, there will be congestion on the road. Engineers call this the volume to capacity ratio of a particular road, or V slash C. In essence, the closer the ratio is to one, the more likely there will be congestion on the road. Engineers use this ratio to determine whether or not to recommend for a road widening. And for the past century, whenever a city is planning on building new roads, they will always aim for an extremely low volume to capacity ratio to ensure that all current and future motorists enjoy a smooth and uninterrupted trip. On paper, this is all well and good. The future demands that are calculated based on current traffic patterns and population growth are already being met with existing supply. But more often than not, these high-capacity roadways often reaches their design capacity way sooner than originally predicted. Obviously, something is off. The law of supply and demand seems to fail when it comes to roadway design. So, what exactly causes the traffic demand to be so much higher than originally expected? In the past, engineers failed to realize that the law assumes that supply and demand are two independent variables that are only influenced by outside factors. But in traffic engineering, demand is directly influenced by supply, and when the supply is increased, you are also creating more demand. The wide roads that are used to accommodate traffic demand are dangerous to cyclists, unwelcoming to pedestrians, and takes up valuable spaces for public transits. Increasing traffic supply discourages all other modes of transportation, all the while promoting car usage. This induced demand quickly eats up the existing road supply, which makes the road even more congested. Since traffic jam is detested by everyone, people quickly complain to their local representatives, who then commission engineers to widen the road and increase supply. Well, it fixes the problem in the short term. It further discourages other modes of transportation and creates more road users in the long terms, which creates even more congestion, and the cycle of induced demand begins anew. Fundamentally, there are only two ways to tackle congestion. The easy way is to build wider roads and increase supply. However, this method is not sustainable in the long run, as it will only create more traffic through induced demand. The hard way is to invest in more sustainable modes of transportation. Since automobiles are very inefficient in transporting people, encouraging other modes of transportation such as public transit and active transit will decrease road demand and thereby reducing the odds of road congestion. But public transit and active transit infrastructures are often unpopular as they take up spaces from car user. So municipal governments are faced with a difficult decision. Whether to choose the popular option to widen the road and increase traffic supply, which will cause more congestion in the long run, or the unpopular option to use road dieting to dedicate more spaces for other modes of transportation, 
In a car-dependent city, it is sometimes extremely difficult for municipal governments to implement these changes due to fear of backlashes from motorists, which is why we're still seeing endless highway expansion and road widening projects all over North America. Building wider roads have been proven time and time again to increase congestion in the long run, and ironically, the best way to tackle car dependency is not to increase supply endlessly until the entire city is made out of pavement. Instead, dedicating spaces for other, more efficient modes of transportation might be the answer to congestions that engineers have been looking for all these years. Hey folks, thanks for watching yet another video. If you have enjoyed, please consider to leave a like and subscribe. As always, this is the Transportation Channel, and I will see you next time.